Straight up. The Lord of the Rings is a trilogy written in 1937 through 1949 by J.R.R. Tolkien, and that's John Ronald Ruel Tolkien. The most detailed trilogy in all of history, in my opinion. There's so much going on all the time in every plot of the story, but here is the most basic description. In the year 3434, the Second Age, it begins with three rings given to the elves, the leaders of the elf race and seven to the dwarf lords, uh, that are the miners of the underground in the mountains, and nine to the race of men. But all were deceived when the Lord Sauron of Mordor, in secret, made a master ring to control all the others in Mount Doom. This ring had the power of, of all the others, and it had the power of Middle-earth. When it was taking over <coughs> Middle-earth, the men and elves formed an alliance and marched up against the armies of Mordor. They were almost to a victory, but then Sauron stepped out and power began to expand. <clears throat> and the king of Gondor stepped out against him, and Gondor is a city close to, uh, close to Mordor. He stepped out against him to fight, but he was struck down. Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. Oh, thanks. Took up his father's sword and sliced the ring straight from Sauron's hand, destroying his physical form. But his soul remained in the ring because it was, his, it was the ring's will to survive, which in time would rebuild Sauron's physical form if it seduced a man who came across it and tried to take it for himself. The plan was to take him over and then rebuild the power again. Isildur had this opportunity, but men being very easily corrupted, it was mesmerized and since men were weak, he took it for himself. Big mistake. So, okay, you can go again. <laughs> and then this picture is when Lord Elrond is telling him to cast it into the fire, and then Isildur says no, and then walks out and takes it for himself. On the way home, he is ambushed by orcs, and the ring falls into the Gladden River for two and a half thousand years. Over time, Gollum finds the ring and takes it into his own hands, deep into the Misty Mountains. There, oh wait, yeah, there it consumed him. It poisoned his mind and became his precious. He had it for 500 years and it twisted and formed him into two, a two-minded creature who loved and hated himself. After the ring had abandoned him, <laughs> after the ring had abandoned him, Bilbo Baggins, on his adventure, came across the ring. And when he was in the mist, uh, in, on a journey through the Misty Mountains, he picked it up, escaping Gollum's wrath. In, in The Hobbit, they go through a series of riddles, and Smeagol's trying to trick him into giving up the ring, but Bilbo is not outsmarted and gets away with it. After Bilbo has the ring for 60 years, it reawakens and chooses Frodo Baggins to be the next ring bearer. Frodo, who is not weak to the ring's powers, goes on a journey to take the ring back to Mount Doom to destroy it, the only place it can be destroyed. He sets out from Rivendell, the city of the elves, with eight companions to Mordor. Over time, through their journey, they get separated, and Frodo and his servant and best friend Sam have to find their own way to Mordor with the help of Gollum, who tries to take the ring from Frodo's hands again. But the series is the series is probably the most complicated and detailed series in all of history. It took ten years for Peter Jackson, the director, to make. And it is, it's won Grammys and awards. But I encourage all of you to read it and to watch the movies. It's very challenging and it's in Old English, but I think that all of you would enjoy it. And there's so many more details that I could explain, but this is the, the minimum description of it. <laughs>